please join me on my 11-day cruise with Hurtigruten expeditions around Iceland. Arriving with a direct flight from Frankfurt to Keplavik, we got a direct transfer to Reykjavik. As level 2 member of the Hurtigruten Ambassador Program, a little welcome snack awaited me in my cabin. Our first target was the Snefelsens Peninsula. Okay, I will use my Icelandic AI colleague to support with the pronunciation. Snefelsens. Passing the beautiful, ice-tipped volcano we headed for. As the harbor is not large enough for cruise ships, the MS Maud anchored outside in the bay. We were transported to the harbor by the tender boats. This was easy and comfortable, also for senior passengers. Okay. Hello, sir. Hello. <laughs> We booked the optional trip highlight Schneifelsnes, which was a bus ride around the volcano, stopping at four scenic locations for short walks and photo opportunities. Kirkjufell. Dupalon Santur. Arnar's Tappy Bjarnar Foss After a long day full of volcanoes, waterfalls, churches and scenic cliffs and beaches, we returned to the harbor and were delighted to see our first puffin, hunting for fish. Short before midnight, we could already see the cliffs marking the most western point of Iceland. These legendary, steep, bird cliffs were our target for tomorrow. Pop. 
Patreksfjörður. A one and a half hour bus ride through the glacier carved landscape brought us to the westernmost point of Iceland, the bird cliffs of Lautrapjörg. Here are literally millions of seabirds, the razorbill, approximately 161,000 couples, fulmer, approximately 400,000 guillemots, kittiwakes, and many, many other species of seabirds, including my favorites, the puffins, nesting and raising their chicks in the cliffs. are so tame, as it were, and fearless of us humans. They barely budge, even though people get very close. They seem to be used to having people around and know that we are not going to harm them. If you want to see these cute little birds, make sure you are here in June or July, as May could be too early and August too late. On a specific day early August, all puffins leave the land to live their life at sea, to return sometime in May, to start their breeding season. In my opinion the 50-minute time slot for the cliffs was far too short. I could have stayed for several hours longer, especially in this, for Iceland, unusual good weather. For the next day excursions in the North Fjords were planned. But unfortunately the weather got worse. Strong, cold winds from Greenland forced the crew to replan. As the wind increased, the MS Mod sought shelter in a wind-protected fjord, near Holmavik. Even though the fjord was wind-protected, landing was a little rough. As the additional light rain didn't make the crossing particularly pleasant, many stayed on board to keep an eye out for whales. The more adventurous minded, took a wild and romantic walk to the nesting grounds of the Arctic Tern.
The now abandoned herring processing factory in Djupavik was the biggest one in Iceland when it opened in 1935. But that new and improved building was actually the second herring factory in the village, which was first settled in 1917 around the fishing industry, but abandoned when business slowed. The new factory opened in 1935, fitted with all the latest modern equipment for processing herring. But when the staff of around 300 moved to the sleepy village to work in the impressive factory, they were surprised by the surrounding town's complete lack of churches, police, or even a mayor. Over the next several years, a town was built up around the factory. But by the late 1940s, the herring were all but gone from Hunafloy Bay, and the factory folded in 1954. The town of Djupavik was abandoned by 1968. The next planned destination was Akureyri, when the captain suddenly stopped the engines and the announcement came, humpback whales backboard. Iceland's second largest city, was the starting point for some optional tours. I had chosen the thermal baths in the region of Mývatn. In the 14th century, when Mývatn region was Europe's principal source of sulfur, and it was transported on horseback to Gausir in Eyjafjörður, or to Husavík, and then it was shipped to Europe to make gunpowder. Now Maskarð. A fine alternative to the very expensive Blue Lagoon, near Reykjavik is the Jard Boden Outdoor Pool. The hot spring supplies boiling hot water, which is cooled down to 40 or 36 degrees in the two swimming pools. Mm -hmm. 
although you can buy drinks in advance and collect them in the pool bar, I didn't buy one, as the ubiquitous smell of rotten eggs would have overpowered any taste. Despite the smell, bathing there is very pleasant, especially with the freezing cold temperatures outside. On the way back we visited the Godafoss waterfall. There are a number of myths surrounding this imposing waterfall. Godafoss got its name from an Icelandic legend. It says that around the year 1000 AD a chief decided to make Christianity the state religion. In order to disempower the previous gods, images of the old gods were then thrown into the Godafoss. Sixty percent of the world's puffins breed in Iceland, and the puffin colony in Grimsey is one of the largest in Iceland. And as our schedule allowed us an eight-hour stay on Grimsey, I was looking forward to spend plenty of time on watching these beautiful and funny birds. The question of where to find the puffins on Grimsey quickly became superfluous. They were actually everywhere all over the cliffs. The grassy cliffs were riddled with their breeding holes. As soon as you landed in the harbor, thousands were seen sitting in front of their brood caves. They were a little more shy than the Western Cape Colony, as the Icelanders on Grimsey still hunted them until recently. If you got closer than 8 to 10 meters, they flew away. And when one flew off, all of them in the area followed. The amazing thing about these funny birds is, that they can store their catch in their beak while continuing to hunt. A specially shaped tongue, allows them to open their beak underwater for hunting, without losing the fish they have already caught. The artwork, Orbis et Globus, was inaugurated on the Arctic Circle in Grimsey Island in the fall of 2017. It is a three-meter sphere which is meant to be moved around the north end of the island, in accordance with the movement of the Arctic Circle. Due to long-term oscillations in the Earth's axis, the Arctic Circle moves about 15 meters northwards, every year. This means that the Arctic Circle will pass Grimsey by around 2050. The weather improved on the drive to Husavik, but the wind and waves kept getting stronger. Therefore, the booked whale watching tours were all cancelled. It was a bit unfortunate. There you are, in the whale watching capital of Iceland, and then you can't go on the trip because of the weather. The Hurtigruten team organized a shuttle bus service, to this scenic valley, with cascades of waterfalls.
not sure if it was a passenger or crew training of the National Geographic Explorer, but it was quite entertaining to watch the man overboard exercise in the ice cold water of the fjord. Our last leg of this great cruise took us to the rugged Westman Islands. Unfortunately, another cruise ship was blocking the port of Hayme, so we took the mod for a small island tour around the bizarre rocks and small islands. After about an hour, the harbor was finally free, so we could take the narrow harbor entrance. On one side steep cliffs and on the other, a lava wall, created 1973, by human hands and water pumps. is the largest settlement on the islands. Mainly living of the fishing industry, what you can easily smell. The rest of the island of Heime is dominated by volcanoes, with the memory of the dramatic eruption in 1973, sheep, wind and the largest puffin colony in the world, with around 1.1 million puffin burrows. But as fishing industry and feeding grounds collide, the millions of puffins are far out at sea at daytime, and only return at night from their hunt. Overall it was a very relaxing cruise, with excellent food and service, giving me the opportunity to get to know the Icelandic culture, nature and wildlife. 